So let's improve our system a little bit more by adding object-oriented uh, programming in here. So what I will do here is I will um, what I will do here is go to my code. Now make sure you check the link in the description because this code is there so that we are starting together. So obviously we have a functions page here. And then we have a home page that we want to deal with that has these posts here loading. And then we have the posts page, which has a similar system here. Uh, but what we need is, the thing is, uh, using queries like this uh, can be a little bit a little bit of a problem because these variables that we put here, um, the variables that we put in there could be unsafe. So what we want instead, instead of having to uh, write a query when we want to load something like this, we want to abstract this query thing. So let me tell you what, uh, ex explain a little bit what I mean, or just show you what I mean. So here, what I'm going to do is convert this whole thing into a class, okay? So I'm just going to go at the top here, okay, and create a class. So this first one is going to be the class database. So I'm going to call this one class database. Wait, wait, database. Like this. Like that. And then move the function in here like so. So this function is for connecting to the database. Okay, so now this other one here is going to be a class. Um, this one is going to be a class posts like this. Okay. Now the reason we're naming it posts here is because we want to use it to interact with the posts table. So it's always a good idea to create a class for every table that you have on your system. This way, uh, you make sure that the only thing you are reading from here, your query will always be uniform in here because we know that we are just reading from the posts table. So if anything comes in that tries to read from a different table, you know that there's a problem. So this is class posts, right? So what I wanted to do is I want to be able to use this function in here as if it were in here. So what I will do is to extend. So I'm just going to say extends database like so. So this class right here extends this one. What that simply means is that whatever we added in here is also going to be available in here. <coughs> it's the same as if this function was in here. So you may be asking then why are we putting them separate like this if we're simply going to extend it? Well, the importance here is that the reason we didn't put this in here is that we're going to have other classes. For example, we're going to have class user over here, right? And instead of having to repeat this connect function in here, because normally if we copy this and just put it in here, it means every time we want to connect, we may need to copy that function and put it in here as well for the user because the user will need to connect to the database as well. So instead of that, we separate it into a class of its own. That way, every, every class like user just extends the database class like so, and then they have access to connection to the database, right? So I won't be needing this, but I'll just leave it like that. There's no problem there. This is a complete, uh, Usually classes have capital letters here just to symbolize that they are classes. So we extend that so we can uh, read from there. Now, every time we want to read something that's a function, we want to call a function that's within here, uh, within uh, the same class, we use the keyword this like so. So when I say this connect, it's going to connect to that. The reason it can connect to this is because we are extending it. So it's as good as this function is one of us in here. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And the rest uh, remains exactly the same. 
no problem here we are just the same now the difference is this this db read right here is a reading mechanism for the database so we don't need this in here as well because we also need to read data from the user's uh, class as well so the user's class will also need the read function so i'm going to cut this out and put it here like so that way everything that extends database will also have the capacity to read from the database okay so hopefully that is making sense as well now since we're never going to use this outside we're just going to be using it with guy uh, these uh, functions that are in here we might call it private like so this way we don't give access to anyone to just connect to our function it will be private to only be used by other functions which are within the same class but this one that we'll be reading from outside we're going to call it public like so okay so hopefully that's not too uh, complicated up to this point and then now since we can read all this we can move our queries now so for example here i want to get uh, posts okay and i have a limit here right limit two i just want to get two of those posts so what i can do now is to create a function that does this whole thing for me so all this you're seeing here i don't need to connect to db read here i'll just copy and then i'll go to my uh functions here so it's no longer functions it's more like a classes file but uh, we'll leave it as functions like that i will paste in here so i'm just going to create a function this one will be a public function i'll say public function get home underscore posts like this okay and then i paste everything in here get posts like so so home posts will run will only get two posts like that select all from posts order by id like that and then we get home posts like so so we are very specific here because this is just going to work for this particular uh, thing so here i will return this result here i will say return without the equal sign like so db read simple as that right so now when i want to get posts from here instead of having to type a query at this location where is this uh, here instead of having to type a, uh, a query all i need to do is just say result is equal to and here i just say posts wait a minute yeah post that's the post class so i'm just going to call it post class like this and they say get home posts like so that's what i do and then instead of putting this query here i instantiate the class i'll say post class is equal to new post like so okay so this is instantiating the class to make it usable that's what i'm doing here so that we can use it so this can be any variable it can be a like that it's going to work just fine so or you can call it posts like this or post class like that so you can just say post is equal to new post and then result is equal to post get home post now the advantage of doing things this way is that if for example i just need to get a single post i will do this i'll just say public function get one post like so get one post and then here i will have an id to spare okay and then give it uh get the post like that and then i'll just say select all from posts uh, where id is equal to and then i will use that id there but let me sanitize this id first actually let's not do that we're going to learn about sanitizing very shortly so no problem let me just put the id there as it is 
where ID is equal to ID, there's no need to order a single uh, item here. So I'm just going to say limit one like that and then return the queried result like so. So every type of query you're going to do, you just create a function. That way when I come back here, if I want a single post for any reason, all I need to do is just say result, get single post and provide the ID there. No need to type a query to do that. So this increases your security because there's less variables that could go wrong. So here, once we do this, it should work just fine. So let's go back and see if there are any errors here. This is the home page. Okay, so error class post not found. So that class was not found. That's what it's saying. Well, let's go to functions and see we added an S, so that's never good. Let me remove that. It's supposed to be singular. Well, usually you can name it whatever you want, but it's always better. So it's saying call to undefined function db read. So inside uh, here, db read. So every time I'm calling a function that's within here, like I said, I have to use the this keyword like that. Otherwise, it would tell me it doesn't know that function. So refresh and everything is back to normal. But if we now go to posts here, we're going to get an error because those functions do not exist. So all we need to do is instantiate this, exactly what we've done here, and come back here and paste like so. But wait, let me not remove the query. I'll just paste these guys here and then I'll cut the query. So instead of get home posts, I'll just say get posts. That's what it's going to be. It's going to maybe get all posts like that. Okay. Then I'll just copy or cut this query here and then get to the posts here. So the way we are doing get home posts, because this is similar to the other thing there, get all posts like that. And then uh, I will just remove the limit here like so. And that's it. So if I come back here and refresh, I have my posts, I have my posts there. So it looks like we are doing more work now for the same exact result, right? But we aren't because now we have very specific functions in very specific classes where we are doing this thing. So if anything goes wrong, I know exactly which function to look at and in which class it exists, okay? And I just need to deal with this line of code here, just two lines of code here, and I solve the problem. Because we have fragmented the code like this, it's easy to read, it's easy to know what's going on here. I'm getting all posts here, so I just look at this. What's wrong here? And I figure it out. What about here? What's wrong here? I figure it out. Come back here, it will tell me something wrong here. I know I have to go to this function in this class. You know. Code is very simply organized, very well organized in here to a point where it's easy to figure out where your loopholes are, uh, where the risk is, and if there's a risk somewhere, you can close it down rather quickly. Okay, so hopefully you have learned something here. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at giving, uh, how to give access to users. Okay, so I'm going to see you in the next video.